Once upon a time, in a small village of Ogidi, there lived a young woman named Adako. She had recently married her beloved husband, Odeli, in a joyous ceremony filled with music, dancing and feasting. Adako and Odeli were deeply in love and looking forward to starting a family together. However, Odili's mother, Nedi, had never approved of her son's marriage to Adako. Nedi was a bitter, controlling woman who wanted Odili to marry a woman from a rich family, not a humble village girl like Adako. From the very start, Ned was cold and dismissive towards her new daughter-in-law. The first year of Adako and Odili's marriage passed without Adako conceiving a child. As more time went by, Ned became increasingly cruel, convinced that Adako was infertile and causing the couple with barrenness. One morning, as Adako cooked breakfast, Ned is stormed into the kitchen. It's been over a year and still no baby, she snarled. What use are you if you cannot produce grandchildren? Ned grabbed the heavy mortar and pesto from Adako's hands and shoved her outside. You are worthless, she shouted. Odili deserves a proper wife. Poor Adako was left in tears, but she dared not tell Odili about his mother's cruelty, afraid to cause conflict between them. The months dragged on, and still Adako did not conceive a child. Nedi's treatment escalated. She would slap Adako, force her to do long hours of back-breaking chores deprive her of food and berate her viciously. One day, as Adako washed clothes at the river, Nedi appeared and pushed her violently into the water. You are cursed, she yelled. You will never bear children. My son should cast you out. Odili happened to be passing by and saw his mother shoving Adako into the river. He ran over and pulled a sobbing, soaking wet Adako from the water. Mother, what is the meaning of this? He demanded angrily. But Ned was unrepentant. I am trying to make this foolish girl accept that she is infertile. She is useless to us without children. Odili frowned. Do not abuse my wife again, mother. If the spirits bless us with children, so be it. If not, Adaku is still my chosen wife. Adaku's heart lifted, thinking her husband had finally defended her. But soon, she realized nothing changed. Over the coming weeks, Nedi continued beating and berating Adako, and Odili did nothing more to intervene or restrain his mother's cruelty. Adako felt utterly abandoned by the man who was supposed to protect her. At night, she wept silently, wondering how much more she could endure. Why had Odili not stopped this torment? Nedi's mistreatment of Adako worsened every day. She would pinch Adako's skin black and blue, force her to kneel on hard corn kernels, even burn her with hot cooking pots. Each time, Odili would protest mildly, but never made any effort to control his mother or prevent the abuse. Adako grew thin and gaunt from the endless cruelty. Deep sadness filled her once joyful spirit. But one night, 
she had a dream that rekindled a flicker of hope. An ancient river goddess rose from the waters, glowing in the moonlight. My child, she said gently to Adako, I have seen your suffering and want to help you. On the night of the next full moon, come to my sacred groove in the forest. Drink from the pool beneath my statue and you will be blessed with a child soon after. But tell no one of this dream. Adako awoke filled with wonder and waited eagerly for the coming full moon. On the appointed night, she snuck out to the moonlight groove, finding the goddess's statue and pool just as in her dream. The water was cool and sweet on her parched tongue. Adaku prayed silently for a child to bring her joy again and restore her place in Odile's heart. One month later, Adako happily realized she was with child at last. She wanted to run and tell Odile, but remembered the goddess's warning to stay silent. She spent her day singing softly to the baby growing inside her. Adako hoped that when their child arrived, Odile would finally stand up to his mother and all her mistreatments would end. But when Adako's pregnancy started to show, Nedi only became more enraged. Liar, she shouted. You are trying to deceive us. May you be struck down for your falsehoods. Nedi dragged Adako outside and whipped her mercilessly. Adako had no choice but to confess everything about her dream and the groove. Nedi pointed a bony finger, screaming, Witch, demon, you have brought evil on this house. Odile watched anxiously but did not intervene. Adako fled into the forest, more frightened for her unborn child than herself. She took shelter under a great Iroko tree, its leaves rustling as if to suit her. In the weeks that followed, Adako's womb grew round and full, though she lived like a wild woman in the woods. She drank from streams, ate fruits and nuts, and made herself a small hut of branches. Sometimes she would creep to the edge of the village to watch from afar as Odili went about his days, never coming to look for his banished pregnant wife. The sadness Adako felt was deeper than any river, but she continued to talk and sing to her baby, sewing a bundle of tiny clothes from scraps of the clothes she found. Little one, I have nothing left in this world but you, she whispered. At last, the day came for Adako's baby to be born. She labored alone in her small hut, screaming out of pain through clenched teeth. As dawn broke, she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, whom she named Oyunyechi for she was a gift from the goddess. Adako nursed the precious child tenderly, tears of joy mixing with sorrow in her heart. She knew they could not hide in the woods forever. She wrapped baby Oninechi close to her chest and walked slowly back to the village that had banished her. Nedi was shunning butter in the yard when she saw Adako approaching, she grabbed a broom and raised it to strike the young mother and child. But suddenly, Odile stepped between them. Stop! He commanded with a force Adako had never had before. 
he took the broom from his mother's hands. This has gone too far, he declared. Adaku is my wife and the mother of my child. She will be welcomed back into my home with honor. Amazed at her husband's firmness, Adako cradled baby Oninechi as she was ushered inside, oddly meeting Nedi's eyes evenly. I cannot forget the cruel injustice done to my wife, but she needs care and rest now. We shall discuss your actions later. So Adaku was reunited with her husband at last. The newborn bringing some joy into their troubled home. Ned simmered with quiet rage, but no longer dared mistreat Adaku with Odile's protection. In the following days, Adaku regained her health and spirits as she nursed little Oninechi. Odili clearly adored his daughter, spending hours holding and playing with her. But he never apologized for abandoning Adako to his mother's torment. The wounds from the months of abuse at Nedi's hands and her own husband's neglect left scars deep in Adaku's heart. She did not think they could ever truly heal. One afternoon, as Adaku gently bathed Oinyechi, Odili came and knelt beside them. My wife, he said sorrowfully, I have been a fool in my cowardice and weakness. I allowed my mother's evil to go unchecked, failing to protect the woman I swore my life to. I know I cannot undo the harm I have done to you, but I vow before the gods that from now on I will honor you, love you, and shield you from all wrongdoing. Please stay here as my wife so I can spend my life striving to mend what has been broken. Adaku gazed at this man who had hurt her so deeply, yet still hurt her heart. The wounds you ignored will always pain me, she replied quietly. But now there is a new life in this home. I will stay and we will walk the road ahead together. In time, Adako's heart began to heal, suited by Odile's newfound devotion and little Oninechi's laughter. Nedi eventually let go of her resentment, softened by the love she found for her granddaughter. While the scars remained, Adako now hoped for the future. She had reclaimed her place by her husband's side, and she knew that those storms may shake the foundations of even the strongest homes. With compassion and perseverance, what is broken can be rebuilt, and hope can be found anew. Adako and Odili worked each day to restore the love and trust that have been lost. He was true to his words, protecting Adako from his mother's cruelty and showing her the devotion she deserved. In time, Nedi's heart melted as she played with little Oninechi, who grew more bright and beautiful each day. Seeing the rightness of their family, Ned finally apologized to Adako for all the pain she has inflicted. Adako found the grace within herself to forgive, knowing that bitterness would only breed more bitterness. Slowly, the wounds of the past mended. Joy returned to their home. 
as Adako and Odili raised strong, smiling children, hands joined together.